let's get started. Hey, this is Daniel from What Obi Plays, and today I've got a teardown and modding guide for the Tribui Brick and Tribui Brick Hammer. It's a relatively simple teardown compared to other devices I've covered on my channel, but I'll show you how to make the buttons on this device about 40% quieter. The Trim UI Brick was released last year and is a Linux-based retro gaming handheld with an all-winner A133P processor, 1GB of RAM, dual front-firing speakers, 3000mAh battery, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and a very crisp 3.2-inch 1024x768 display with a 4x3 aspect ratio. It has a very slim profile and is very pocketable due to it not having analog sticks. That does limit the types of games you can comfortably play, but I think this is a great PS1 and below device, especially for handheld systems like GBA. I don't actually own the Tribui Brick Hammer, but it's basically just an all-metal shell version of the brick, so the internals should be exactly the same. The tools we'll need are shown on the table, and affiliate links to everything will be in the description box. I buy all my devices with my own money, so if you use those links to buy any of these tools, that really helps me out and I would appreciate it. Here are the sections I've marked on my magnetic mat if you want to pause the video now and copy me. But let's go ahead and get started. Begin by powering the device off and removing the micro SD card. Then flip it around and use the T6 driver to take out the six screws on the back shell. Once those are out, gently pull the two halves of the device apart. Don't yank it off, we need to disconnect the battery connector, and you can just grab the cable near the base and pull it off, it's pretty durable. Once that's off, switch to the Phillips 00 bit and take out the two screws on the metal plate and then that will slide off. We can remove the shoulder buttons, but I usually just leave them in. On the bottom half, pivot the USB board and it will come out. We can see the shoulder buttons use micro switches and these are pretty clicky. Unfortunately, at least for my device, the tolerances were so tight that I couldn't even put a single layer of captain tape on them to dampen the sound, so I had to leave them stock. You might be able to fit it on your device, but I think it's up to whether you got lucky with the manufacturing tolerances. There's no reason to remove the battery, so let's continue. Remove the Wi-Fi antenna cable at the top left and the two speaker cables on the bottom left of the board. Then flip up the gate on the LCD ribbon cable near the top and pull it out. There are five screws we need to remove. Two are on the big top translucent LED bar and three are on the bottom half of the motherboard. Take those out and then remove the LCD bar. Now start to lift the board up and make sure to push the LCD ribbon cable through the hole in the board as you pull it out. Once we have the board out, we can see that the D-pad and ABXY buttons all use dome switches, and everything else, the start select menu buttons, function buttons, and even the volume and power buttons all use micro switches. The D-pad and ABXY buttons are attached to the membrane but not glued on like AYN and retro devices, which still eliminates button jiggle, which is a nice feature even on this budget device. Then we can take out the start, select, menu buttons, function buttons, slider, and volume buttons. I had a lot of difficulty trying to take the power button out, so I just left it in place. This is as far as we need to go with the teardown, so let's get to the mods. For the ABXY buttons, I use 0.4mm thick TPU rings. If you haven't seen these before, I highly recommend checking out my silent button mods video, which I'll link in the description box below that like button. I go over what these rings are and how I made them, and I also publish the 3D files to GitHub if you want to print them yourself. If you don't have a printer, I also sell them on my Etsy shop, I'll leave that link below as well. I didn't make a ring for the D-pad because it's not clacky. The rest of the mods are extremely simple, I just put one layer of electrical tape on every other micro switch on the motherboard. For the side switches, I cut a longer strip so I can wrap them around the board so they won't come loose. Once we put it back together, I'll show a before and after so we can see the difference, but for now, let's reassemble the brick. Putting it back together is mostly the process in reverse, and I have a few tips that will make it easier. Start by putting in all the buttons we took out, so the volume and slider, function buttons, start select menu buttons, and the D-pad and ABXY buttons and membranes. Then put in the two speakers. The one with the longer cable goes in the left speaker hole, and make sure to align the wires with the cutout on the slot so the speaker stays flat. Position the connectors so the right speaker cable is above the left one, since that's how the connectors are positioned on the motherboard. Take the motherboard and push the slider to the top position. Do the same for the slider in the frame, so they're both in the top position. Insert the LCD ribbon cable through the hole, then put the board into the frame starting at the bottom, and make sure the headphone jack and USB port go into their slots. Make sure the speaker wires and Wi-Fi antenna cable aren't getting pinched, and then slowly pivot the board down. 
but before you fully seat the board, check that the slider and switch are both still in the top position. You can see on my board I no longer have that little tab on my slider because I didn't do this one time and it snapped off, so don't make the same mistake I did. Once the board is in, put in the top LCD bar and then the 5 screws on the bar and board. Then reconnect the Wi-Fi antenna cable, speaker connectors, and the LCD ribbon cable. For the back shell, slide the shoulder buttons back into the metal plate if you took them out. Put the USB board back into the slot using your spudger to help you pivot it. Slide the metal plate into the back shell, making sure to align these posts with the holes on the shoulder buttons. Then put in the two screws to secure the metal plate to the back shell. Reconnect the battery and push the two halves together. Switch to the T6 bit and put in the last six screws and we're done. Now let's test the buttons and see how much quieter they are versus stock. I have a sound meter here and we'll be measuring before and after and then I'll calculate how much quieter it is. I go over the formula for calculating noise reduction in my silent mods video, so check that out at this timestamp if you want to understand the theory. For the ABXY buttons, it looks like they went from about 46 decibels to about 39 dB, which is a 38% reduction. The D-pad went from 43 to 38, a 29% reduction. The start, select, and menu buttons went from 44 to 41, a 19% reduction. The rest of the buttons were around 46 dB and dropped to 36 dB, which is a 50% reduction. Overall, this is a relatively straightforward mod, and even without the TPU rings, I think the ABXY buttons would be a lot quieter. I would say it's definitely worth opening up the brick to mod the buttons, since it's a fairly straightforward teardown, at least compared to other more complex devices like the AYN Odin 2 Mini. I hope you enjoyed this teardown and modding video for the Trim UI Brick and Trim UI Brick Hammer. I do a lot of teardown and modding videos for other gaming handhelds like this one, as well as review videos for newer handhelds such as the Ioneo Pocket Ace. Check out my channel if you're interested, and consider subscribing if you're not subscribed, it'll really help me out. My Ioneo Flip 1S is on its way to me now, and I hope to receive it within the next week or two. I'll be doing an impressions and teardown video for that as well, so turn on notifications so you know when I post those videos. Thanks and have a great day.